Hello, Mr. Cortado. Sherry, it's not just for cooking or old ladies. They're really complex wines. We're going to learn more in this video. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome back to Exotic Wine Travel. I am your host, Matthew Horky. <laughs> Welcome back to the show. We're going to talk about Sherry today, a style of wine that is confusing, confounding, kind of misunderstood. You know, a lot of people, th when they think of sherry, they think of just cooking, something to cook with, or, you know, old granny sipping it on the porch, or that it's just sweet. But no, there's a lot of sherry out there that's complex, thought-provoking. Sherry is actually just an English play on the name Jerez. <laughs> that's the, the name of the town. I guess it was difficult for the British to uh, pr pronounce, so it just became Sherry. You know, Sherry's a fascinating wine region. Lots of history. You can, uh, the Phoenicians are believed to have introduced viticulture to the very south corner of Spain, southwest corner of Spain, right near the Straits of Gibraltar. Really interesting wines because it's so hot and dry here. They had to adapt and make learn how to make a certain special type of wine. A majority of sherry production is actually dry. And today we're going to talk about one of those complex dry sherries, one of the, the mysterious Palo Cortado. These wines are dry, they're fortified, they're a little bit heftier, they're a little bit bigger in alcohol, so there's something to really sip on and contemplate. Palo Cortado is the rarest type of sherry. I think around 2 to 3 percent of all sherry produced uh, every year bottled is actually Palo Cortado. So first, to understand sherry, which is a complex subject in itself, you kind of understand the styles of sherry. On one side, you have the ones aged under the floor or under a layer of yeast. Those are biologically aged sherries, and then ones that are aged oxidatively. So on one side, you have your finos and your manzanillas. Those are aged under a thin film of yeast called the floor. And within those styles, you have other classifications, other ages, going down to Amontillado. On a side note, I love wines that are aged under the floor. When you drink uh, sherry-style wines or other wines that are aged under the floor, I like it because... I feel like it's kind of what uh, people may have been drinking 2,000, 3,000 years ago in this part of the world. On the right side, uh, you have Oloroso. These are darker wines that are aged without the floor. And for the most part, these are dry until you get down to the bottom where you get some cream sherries. Those are sweet sherries. In between the style, you have what we have here, Palo Cortado. For the longest time, I thought it was named after a person, but Palo Cortado is not named after a person. It means cross stick in Spanish, and, and let me explain. Palo Cortado are barrels of wine that originally are meant for biological aging, like Finos, Amontillados, but after a year, the winemakers, the cellar masters, they taste the wines. They usually mark the fino with a straight up line. And after a year, if they think the barrels are exceptional, they use a cross stick, which uh, that's what Palo Cortado is. And these barrels are candidates to become Palo Cortado. The wines can start aging biologically, then eventually they start, the floor dies, then they get some oxidative aging. That's why they get some more color, like an Oloroso. Paul Cortado is a rare and misunderstood type of sherry. Actually, when I was just learning about wine, uh, I asked so many people, can you really tell me the difference between a Paulo Cortado and an uh, Amontillado? And people would give me some generic answers. But yes, it is, it's a selection of a special barrels of wine in the cellar. So we have that one here today. This is the uh, Bodegas Arfi Palo Cortada de la Cruz de 1767. Let's give this a go, shall we? So let's take a look at this wine. Obviously you get this, this rich amber golden color. And these, like I said, these are really unique complex wines you're gonna get like almond like notes of toffee dried nuts almond 
coffee. Sometimes a little bit of a squeeze, almost like dried lemon peel type notes. Mm. Like I said, these are really complex, thought-provoking wines. Uh, not the easiest for people that are just getting into wine, but this is hardcore wine geek stuff. To understand sherry, you also have to understand the uh, the process, the Solera method. And to make it, to kind of simplify it, think about a stack of barrels with the youngest wines on top and the oldest wines on bottom. So what happens is you take the wine from the bottom barrel, the oldest wine, and you actually put that into the bottle. You replace that with wine from the barrel above. And they replace wine from the barrel above from the barrel above. So you go down, 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 down. So in other words, the wines are multi-vintage. They're a blend of vintages, but you always have complex, the oldest blend down at the bottom. And that's what ends up in the bottle. Since Paulo Cortados are aged, for a long time. The wines really concentrate down as they evaporate. Uh, these are fortified wines. The alcohol gets pretty high, like on this Bodega Arfi. This is 20% alcohol. I think it's pretty well integrated, but I love this bitter almond type of finish. Uh, people that have tasted Tawny Port, this is kind of like a dry version of Tawny Port. Super long finish. You're gonna get a little bit of a glow <laughs> that slowly goes down your throat. Uh, this is super complex. Uh, I'd love I want to drink more Paulo Cortado because I love this style of wine. I mean I This is an exceptional complex bottle of wine to me to me like, talking like 93 94 point type of range The typical pairing they say with this is it goes really well. It can go well aperitif dessert uh, Always suggest cheeses dried meat. I've got a Mediterranean cheese right here. Let's see how this goes goes really well. This makes the cheese a little bit even more creamier on the palate. Brings out a little bit more of the fruity notes, the dried fruit, to some of the dried citrus notes in the wine. Very nice. Wines under the floor are not the easiest wines to uh, to appreciate. They're super complex. I always get this uh, kind of slippery almond note, if that makes kind of sense. There's a certain nuttiness to them and I think that's what makes them interesting. These type of wines go excellent with a variety of foods. You know, uh, the, the typical pairing is, you know, jamon, prosciutto, dried nuts, that type of deal. But I find they work well with everything, including spicy foods and even sweet foods. You know, I, I love this style of wine and these wines. The only problem my body has with higher alcohol wines like Tawny Ports, this, uh, spirits like whiskey, cognac, if I have too much, and what I mean too much is like uh, more than one drink, uh, I start to get a headache. Uh, my stomach starts to get a little bit queasy, which is unfortunate because I really like to drink uh, these style of wines, but I just can't have too much of it. I guess I just gotta train more. So let me know, do you like sherry? Are you drinking Palo Cortados? Is there a different style of sherry that you like? Uh, leave it in the comments below. Cheers. Hello, thanks for watching. Hey, you made it to the end. Make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Click the bell so you know when new videos are out. If you like content like this, check out our Patreon page where you get some behind the scenes exclusive content. Thanks for watching. Cheers. Cheers.